It's so toxic that the broccoli doesn't keep it just floating around. Mm. It's again in two different molecules that when it's crushed, so when it's being eaten and macerated by an animal, mm -hmm. it releases and those form the sulforaphane yeah. to poison the animal that's eating that bite. There are like a million different toxins in these things, in beans, just kidney beans, WHO actually says. There's a whole web page on the WHO's website going through all the different natural defense chemicals and toxins in foods that we eat on a daily basis and talking about if you don't prepare these things properly, if you don't eat them in the proper proportion, you can die. So you have a tolerance to alcohol, you drink alcohol, you build up a tolerance, right? And so when you drink alcohol after that, well, you've built up a defense towards it. That's a hormetic effect, right? You, your body's built up stronger. Mm. So you have an avocado tree ripen, it'll have about 50 milligrams of oxalates in it. Mm -hmm. If you pick that thing green, it has over 200. First of all, there's a difference between hormesis, where like exercise, where you push yourself and you sort of maybe damage your body a bit, but then you give your chance of your body a chance to recover, and it does, and you get stronger as a result of that. We call that cycling, right? Yeah, and um, and the thing is, is that when you, you know, but there's a difference between that and tolerance, mm. right? So you have a tolerance to alcohol. You drink alcohol, you build up a tolerance, right? And so. When you drink alcohol after that, well, you've built up a defense towards it. That's a hormetic effect, right? Your, your body's built up stronger. Mm. No, it's built up stronger against alcohol, Yeah. right? And so it's not really helping you necessarily in other, other ways, and it's harming you in other ways. So that's like, okay, well, you can do a bench press, and that's great, and there you're getting stronger. Well, you're getting stronger as far as a bench press is concerned. Yeah. Great, okay, that makes you stronger in other ways too. Maybe it has other benefits. Vascular benefits yeah. and stuff. But if you if you do too much, you blow out your shoulder. Well, that's a net negative, yeah, correct. right? But with tolerance, you know, I mean, there's nothing hormetic about that. Mm. You're just building up a tolerance against alcohol, and there's there's no real other benefits in your body, and there's a lot of damage being caused to your body. You know, after years and decades, we get all sorts of very serious illnesses from long-term alcohol abuse. Right. right? Is that that's hormetic now? So. <laughs> Good point. You know, and, and so so the hormesis is they build up a resistance to alcohol. Mm. Okay. Well, that's only beneficial if you're going to keep drinking alcohol. But you're, you're, and even then, you're not negating the harmful effects of alcohol. You're just sort of reducing them a bit. Mm. Right. And so that's not really the same thing. And, you know, when they say this, oh, well, yeah, I bet you it's hormetic. It's like, okay. Well, again, there are like a million different toxins in, in these things, in beans, just kidney beans, WHO actually says. And they're, they're like crazy pro plant, but there's different people that work at the WHO and some of them are actually real scientists. And there's a whole webpage on the WHO's website going through all the different natural defense chemicals and toxins in foods that we eat on a daily basis and talking about if you don't prepare these things properly, if you don't eat them in the proper proportion, you can die. And they are carcin they can be carcinogenic, they can be mutagenic, they can be directly toxic and cause malnutrition, they can cause serious health adverse effects and even death in humans and livestock. That is wow. on their website. And they talk about- The only issue is the next page over will be like, yeah, but eat all this. Well, you know, and then at the bottom, they, they just say, you know, but you know, most people just eating a balanced diet, it's, you know, it's not that hard. But, okay, but what the hell is a balanced diet, yeah. right? So, and, you know, and they even say, as little as five kidney beans that are that are not prepared properly can put you in the hospital and have put people in the hospital. Kidney beans. Kidney, kidney beans, beans are a normal thing that normal people eat. Yeah, I'm and, pretty sure I've got a can in the pantry. And, and, and most people would think of that as healthy. Oh, yeah, kidney beans, oh, legumes, oh, they're so good for you. Mm. No, no, they're not, they're really not. And, uh, and, if you, and you'll know about that if you don't prepare them properly yeah. and uh, soak them and boil them and cook them in, in certain ways. And so, you know, these people have gone to the hospital because of that, it was, it was, okay, so that's that's a hormetic hospitalization, right? I mean, like, what 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 is hormetic about that? You're getting so sick that you have to go to the hospital, right? And uh, and there are people that you know, like cassava root, right? Yeah. So you go to the tropics, you know, people go to Indonesia, you'll see like, or, or Southeast Asia, you'll see those bags of chips, like cassava chips, yeah. right? So cassava root is the number three calorie source for all the tropics. Okay. And it's the number one calorie source for 500 million people in the world. Whoa. Right? There are two kinds of cassava, mm -hmm. bitter cassava, sweet cassava. They both have cyanide. Bitter cassava has so much cyanide that it's very bitter and it can kill you with the amount of cyanide that it has. Whoa. Right? And so it has to be specially prepared 
And if it's not prepared properly, you can get, you can die from, from the amount of cyanide that's in there. Oh, but even low grade cyanide exposure is not hormetic. It causes thyroid, thyroid dysfunction and neurological impairment. Right. Right. And especially in people, it, it seems to be mostly in people that are, um, protein deficient yeah. they're not getting enough protein but like who are we talking about we're talking about people in the tropics they're not eating that many animals well it, they, and then they're most a lot of them are impoverished yeah and the reason that they're eating cassava and especially you know maybe getting cassava as their main nutrient source mm. is because they're quite impoverished yeah and so they're, they're most people around the world are eating less than the minimum recommendation who recommendation right and we look at that recommendation is like oh well that's that's something to shoot for i'm getting around there no no, no that's a bare minimum Jesus. and you're shooting for that <laughs> you know it's like no this isn't this isn't a speed limit on the highway this yeah, is not yeah, like yeah. don't go here this high but don't go further it's just like no 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 you are not allowed to, you should not go below this yeah. and most people are looking at this for as a target as opposed to a bare minimum wow. and so a lot of these people are going to be in that situation they are going to be protein deficient they are going to be nutritionally deprived they are going to be metabolically un unwell and they have this stuff in their bodies less able to take care of this is the same, uh, same with oxalates as well you know the the more metabolically unwell you are the harsher oxalates are going to be on your body your body's not going to be able to, to handle it that well and so you know people keep arguing that oh it's hormetic 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 okay which ones mm -hmm. okay so cyanide is that hormetic at what level at what dose how much can you eat and put that in practical terms how much cassava can i eat how much bitter cassava can i eat how much you know sweet cassava can i eat how many almonds can i eat because almonds have cyanide too bitter almonds are the inside of a of a peach stone right yeah, yeah, it looks yeah. like an almond it's mm -hmm. like a shriveled up almond that's mm -hmm. called a bitter almond and that's using like baking they extract the almond extract from that and they put like marzipan things like that to get that really strong uh almondy really? taste that's cyanide <laughs> that's <What? laughs> cyanide. yeah so it's you know so much cyanide. so uh, uh you know one or two of those bitter uh bitter almonds yeah. can kill you Damn. now the thing is is that it it, it, it's and, and you know this is a defense mechanism, right? Because mm -hmm. it's actually sequestered in, in ways that it's actually not just sitting there with a whole bunch of cyanide in. Mm -hmm. it. There's, there's separate chemicals that when the plant is crushed, it releases those two chemicals. They bind together and make cyanide. And so that's how. And there's a whole bunch of different different things like that. Like in um, oh Christ, it's it's a it's the chemical in in broccoli that says just so good. I, I'm just dropping the yes exactly and so oh, this is so good for you it causes you know it, it's a uh, it, you know it causes this uh, uh effect to bring up all these uh, um you know antioxidants and things like that mm. it's like yeah yeah right those things are responding to the sulforaphane to try to clear it from your body yeah all right so yeah. that's that's not good i mean maybe there's a there's an added effect a bonus after that as it sticks around for a bit and maybe clears up some other things mm. uh, maybe you could cause that hormetic but no one's proven that yeah you know your body's responding to this to try to clear this stuff away from your body because this stuff is toxic and it's so toxic that the broccoli doesn't keep it just floating around mm. it's again in two different molecules that when it's crushed so when it's being eaten and macerated by an animal mm -hmm. it releases and those form this sulforaphane yeah. to poison the animal that's eating that bite that's so interesting right? because you bite that bite yeah. and you chew that up and it releases sulforaphane right there in your mouth hopefully most people get on this understanding that, that we knew for thousands of years that you need to eat meat that's what we're designed to eat that's yeah. where you get nutrition from and you know and, and the idea i mean you know since I was a kid, you know, we were taught that humans are apex predators, top of the food chain. We hunted, maybe hunter gatherers, but really hunted. Mm. And apex predators don't graze, right? Yeah. Top of the food chain, they eat animals. They, you know, great white sharks aren't eating kelp for roughage, right? Mm. Lions don't eat grass, right? Apex predators eat animals. They eat meat, and that's what we were doing. That's what we've been doing for millions of years. Maybe we eat some plants here and there. Certainly, would use them medicinally uh, when we needed to, but. Generally, we ate meat unless we were in a position that we couldn't get meat, mm. and then we had to eat something else. And it's good that we were able to do that. That's a survival uh, mechanism, right? We were able to survive. You know, it's not like you know, you know, cats and and wolves and things like that. You know, felines like lions, like they really can't eat any plants. So they will they will die. Yeah. And, and the people are this movement, it's like you know, vegan cat movement, like get out of your mind. And so you know, and same and same with with they with, like it, man. Oh, dude. <laughs> 
And I mean, they're just, they're just trying to, they just have no respect for life is yeah. really what it is. Yeah, it's the most unethical thing that you can do is force an animal to like regulate to a different diet when it's, you know, for a fact, mm. you know, that once you open that little can of tuna, they go fucking mental. Yeah. They go yeah. mental. But it's probably hermetic. Probably them dying is hormetic. Right? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean that's the thing too. You know, I mean we're talking about lectins and beans. Like, there's if you don't cook and prepare beans properly, mm. like we have to cook these things in very specific ways because yeah. the lectins can kill you. Um, that's the, why sprouting has become a thing now. Right? Yeah, yeah, it can be, and you know that's like with when you ripen a, a, a fruit, it, it d decreases the amount of toxins in it. So if you have an avocado and it's tree ripened, it'll have about 50 milligrams of oxalates in it. Mm -hmm. If you pick that thing green, it has over 200, mm. right? And the, all, the other, all the other defense chemicals in there are in, in, you know, similarly raised, right? Yeah. Solanine in tomatoes, same thing, right? If it's green, way more solanine and there's toxins in there. If it's vine ripened, then there's a lot less. There's more in the skin because that's barrier protection, so you take the skin off. That's what people used to do. They used to blanch it, take the skin off, take the seeds out because the seeds are the plant's babies. That's where it has a lot of toxins in it. So they just ate the pulp, but only when it was vine ripened. Now we're picking all this this stuff green. And ripening it off the body. off the and, and there are studies showing that they don't detoxify if you do that. Wow. And we're not taking we're not taking the skins off. We're not taking the seeds out, right? So we're 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 adding a lot a lot more toxins to our body that we didn't used to do. And so one of the things that we would do is we cook beans soak them in water for a number of hours, boil them. That's, a, that's an intensive process. You have to do a lot of crap to do that. Yeah. And you can't just do that naturally, right? You can't just, you just like look at it and flame it with your eyes. No, you need to like use chemical means uh, to, to boil that, to cook that. You don't need to cook meat. You can eat raw meat. It's totally fine. Steak mm. tartare, uh, you know, it. yeah. And, and you know, sashimi, things like that. People, I, I eat a lot of raw meat or just very rare meat. Mm. And, um, you know, and so, you know, but we can eat raw meat. We have the biological ability to eat raw meat. We don't necessarily have the biological ability to, to eat a lot of raw plants. And, uh, you know, something we have to cook them, prepare them, or do something chemically to them, like corn. Normally they would do something called nishtamalization, which they would like soak it in lye for like 24 hours and, and do a whole bunch of other things that would chemically extract some of the nutrients, get some of the niacin. Like you know, we're talking about with fiber, those are that's glucose that's bound up in a way that we can't access because the plant does not want us to benefit from eating its body, mm. right? It does that with a lot of other nutrients as well. And so they're not bioavailable. So it may have a lot of iron, it may have a lot of you know, vitamins, but they're not bioavailable. And that's one thing with niacin. Corn has a ton of niacin, but it's not available to us. Yeah. And that's why in Mesoamerica, they they would go put the corn through this process of nishtamalization. What and does that consist of? I, I think it's lye. I think they, they soak it in, in oh, lye, okay. which is, um, uh, you know, base, mm -hmm. right? So it's like sodium hydroxide, I believe. Yeah. And so... Terrible for you. It's, yeah, <laughs> bad. But, but they soak this in the corn in that and mm -hmm. then wash it off and things like right. that. And that seems to break those bonds with the niacin because it's bound up in a way that the plant can use it, but we can't use it, yeah. right? Because we don't have the biological ability to do it because we're not evolved to do it, mm -hmm. right? So if you have to put something through a chemical process to extract the nutrients and detoxify it, then, well, you know, we're not designed to eat it, we right? We probably shouldn't be eating it. <laughs> well, yeah, but, but we're certainly not designed to yeah, eat it. Yeah. So the argument, oh, no, no, we're designed to eat this, then why do we have to put something through a chemical process? Yeah. Obviously, we can't, we, we don't. And so there's actually a thing called pellagra, which is niacin deficiency, which actually killed millions of people, and we didn't know why. And they figured out it was to do with corn because it was a very cheap thing to produce. And, to, and so a lot of the poor people were eating just buttload of corn mm. and they were dying of niacin deficiency and they and they thought it was like a you know a, a, an infection or something like that but the the guy who they commissioned to say hey find out what infection this is he's like i don't think it's an infection i think this is something to do with corn i don't know what it is and he figured out that it was a vitamin deficiency right. and and the, the irony is is that corn has a ton of niacin yeah it's just not bioavailable known, yeah also known as vitamin b3 right niacin i think so yeah yeah 